Mitochondrial diseases such as Alpers or Bath disease are due to faulty or damaged mitochondria caused by mutations in mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondria are fundamental in the making of energy, so mutations can cause loss of some functions in the cell, especially those that require a lot of energy, such as muscle cells. These mutations manifest themselves in various symptoms depending on the cells affected, including loss of motor control, muscle weakness, respiratory problems and cardiac disease. Three-parent IVF combats these diseases by replacing the faulty mitochondria in the cytoplasm of an affected egg with those from a female donor. There are two methods of achieving this, pronuclear transfer and maternal spindle transfer. The first potential method is pronuclear transfer. Eggs and sperm are collected from the mother and father respectively. As in normal IVF, fertilisation is carried out in vitro. The pronuclei from the successful embryo which contains the mother's faulty mitochondria are removed. The donor egg is also fertilised and the pronuclei are removed and destroyed. The parent's pronuclei are then inserted into the donor's fertilised egg. The second method is maternal spindle transfer. Eggs are taken from the mother but are not initially fertilised. Instead, the spindle group is removed. This is the state of maternal chromosomes when the cell is arrested in metaphase 2 of meiosis. The spindle group is then implanted into a donor egg which has also had its spindle group removed. The egg is fertilised with the father's sperm. In both cases, the eggs are left to develop before inserting them into the mother. The resultant embryo contains a nucleus with the mother and father's DNA as well as healthy mitochondria from the donor DNA. A 100% success rate has not been guaranteed for this novel technique. Experiments conducted on rats generated positive results but these implications cannot be safely transferred to humans. The technique might not be able to create a live, healthy baby that is genetically related to the parents. However, this technique could eliminate devastating mitochondrial disorders and give a child a long and healthy life. There are other ethical issues to consider too. The technique could affect the personal identity of the individual. It may confuse or complicate how the child perceives itself or its genetic identity due to the third set of genetics. However, some people believe mitochondrial DNA has no effect on identity. Mitochondria only contain 35 genes, which is less than 1% of the cell's genetic material. Most people are unaware that mitochondria contain genes or that they're even in our cells in the first place. Therefore, it's unlikely to affect the social perception of the individual. Although some could argue that any amount of genetic material is significant to someone's identity. Three-parent IVF affects the germline, meaning the genetics won't just affect one individual, but will be passed down through future generations. This could be seen as a good thing as the benefits of the treatment would be sustained. However, if something were to go wrong, for example a cross between mitochondrial and nuclear DNA, then that mistake will be passed on and would be incredibly difficult to erase. This technique may be regarded as genetic manipulation and so a slippery slope for other genetic alterations. The resulting consequence may create a disruption in the social order as those with money could use it for aesthetic purposes rather than medical purposes. Also, considering that this technique is focused solely on mitochondrial diseases currently and so only benefits a small number of people, we have to ask ourselves, is it really worth the risk? Some people think that it isn't our place to alter the genetics and we shouldn't interfere with nature. After all, diseases are part of our innate fatality as human beings. Treatments such as this may be seen as striving for human perfection. However, it could be seen that the technique is in no way similar to germline therapy as no nuclear DNA is being altered and it's not direct genetic alteration but simply a cytoplasmic transition. It should therefore be considered as somatic gene therapy. The last issue is whether the woman donating the mitochondria should have social or legal rights and responsibilities towards the child. It could be seen that due to the genetics of the mitochondria, the donor also has parenting rights, even if the rights are lesser than those of the parents, yet due to the small amount of genetic material in mitochondria and how little it affects the child's identity, the donation could be considered the same as donating an organ. Another issue that should be addressed is the loss of potential life. Without this donation, the child born would not have had a high chance of survival, and so, in its own way, has the discarded pronuclei created life. Studies are being undertaken to determine whether this is a possibility of treating mitochondrial diseases. A report by the Nuffield Council has now deemed this treatment ethically okay, however, it's still illegal to use in patients in the UK until the safety and the success of this treatment has been confirmed. Until babies are born using this method, side effects will not be seen for generations and it's difficult to say what the exact outcome will be.